Welcome everyone to episode 36 of Signature Maneuver Wrestling Podcast brought to you by the wonderful people over at Grimworks Productions. My name is Jose Guevara. I was MIA, but now I'm back. Hey, nice to meet you. I'm also still watching wrestling and so is my confidant, Mr. Roman Vargas. What up, bitches? Hello, everybody. Uh, Brian is working some extra hours right now, getting the money from the man. He's working for his money. Yeah. So hard for the money. Dude. He was hard for the money, so you better treat her right. Yeah, like ah. that shit. That's my shit, man. <laughs> At work, whenever there's just like always this like '80s radio going on, mm-hmm. and then you oh '70s and '80s every time like just a fucking good song comes in, mm-hmm. it's, good, it's kind of my shit. All right, uh, are are they? Um, I listened to Adam Carolla's podcast, and they were saying like. Uh, there's there's these things that they call tool tunes, and tool tunes are, um, they're good songs, okay. but you would not want people to hear you, um, to to hear you listening to them. Like their test is like, if you hear a song on the radio and it comes on, you're like, yeah, and then you stop at a stoplight and you immediately roll up your window. So you don't want <laughs> you don't want anybody to like hear you like hearing this. And it's not a guilty pleasure because a guilty pleasure is a bad song that you like. Okay, but it's a good song that you just don't want anybody to know. Like uh, the one of theirs that they say is the Goo, Goo Dolls, the Iris. Oh, they're like I it's can see that. it's it's a good song. Yeah. it's just you don't want anybody to know that you're listening to I can, it. I can see that. So that there you go. Uh, I'm just, I, I guess for me, I'm just a ner- like a nervous person in general. Mm-hmm. So whenever I'm like singing and shit, it's it's when I know I'm gonna be on the highway for a minute, <laughs> and I'm not gonna stop. It's usually yeah. when I'm on the highway. <laughs> At, if there's lights, I for some reason I'm not saying shit singing along. <laughs> I'm just stoic with both hands on mm-hmm. ten and two, and just like, and then I get to my destination. Mm-hmm. Dude, no matter where I am, I'm fucking. If I'm listening to music, and I'm not a radio guy, like it's just not me. Yeah. Uh, but like I put on my Spotify and I just like songs, fucking shuffle all. Let's see what we got. And sometimes it's fucking like I have like a whole, I have like a few Christmas albums on my yeah. Spotify. So that like, Christmas song comes out, and I'm fucking jamming out to who is it? Uh, Sinatra or do you do? Uh... There's some Sinatra. Uh, oh, like El- Elvis comes on. Oh, okay. You like some, Blue Christmas and shit like that. You got some Nat King Cole in there, too. Yeah, 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 exactly. Like, that shit comes on. I don't give a fuck. Fucking windows are down. I'm like, woo, fucking. I'm <laughs> dreaming. Like, fucking Bing Crosby and everything. I don't give a fuck, like, what it is. Like, I, I don't know. I guess I have no shame when it comes to Is your to Spotify, that. like, uh, like completely mixed on shuffle all the time? Uh, yeah. Like, uh, for songs specifically, I shuffle them. Like, if I want to listen to, like, a particular album, then I'll actually go to an album. Do you ever do your Discover Weekly podcast or uh, playlist? Mm-mm. You ever done that? No. So, if you go to playlist mm-hmm. and you go to, like, list of playlists, every Monday there's a new one for Discover Weekly. And basically what they do mm-hmm. is they uh, take account of all the songs you listen to mm-hmm. and they make a playlist of songs similar to those from mm-hmm. artists you might have not heard of or might have. but And it's usually pretty good. I listen to some pretty mixed stuff, and there's always at least one thing on there in that mix. Mm-hmm. It's like 30 songs they give you fresh every Monday. Okay. And there's always at least one where I'm like, I did not know about this song. Mm-hmm. It's totally up my alley. Fuck yeah. Okay, I'll have to try that because, that's like, that's the one thing is, like, I have a lot of songs as to a lot of different things, and I'm just like, I'm kind of yeah, getting dude. tired of it, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. there's a lot of, of stuff, and I've listened to most of it already, so I'm just like, okay. I want to look for new music, but every time I do, I'm like, it's crap, 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 crap. Like, I don't like most of it. Yeah. So. All right, I'll probably have to do that instead. I like it better because my thing, I was talking to Brian about this, actually. Mm-hmm. Like, I hate, hate's a fucking strong word. I'm being a child. I hate really is dis- a strong <laughs> word, but I really, really, really don't like it. I really dislike <laughs> uh. consciously having to pick every fucking thing for my entertainment mm-hmm. nowadays. I really, I'm being dead serious. Mm-hmm. I really don't like it. Mm-hmm. This... Okay, I want to listen to music. Not from these fucking millions of artists. Pick. Yeah. Okay, now I gotta. I'm home. I'm gonna watch something. Let me mm-hmm. get on Netflix or Hulu mm-hmm. or HBO Now <laughs> or or what's on anime or mm-hmm. or what movies are available. And it's just yeah. like that's why I I'm weird because I don't have it. But whenever someone has cable, I'm like, fuck yeah, and I'll start <laughs> flipping through the channels. Just see if anything catches your eye. There's just something special about like catching some, like something some like. 
you catching something that you have no idea about. You're just like, yes. oh, this movie's on? Hell yeah. yeah. I'm watching the shit out of that movie. Yeah, I love that. And as a kid, too, the movies I saw by accident, like, random one that always, like, this is my go-to. Mm -hmm. and some people love it, some people don't. I did because I didn't know what to expect. I saw Con Air when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And I saw it randomly. And that was like, I was like, oh, Steve Buscemi, that's that weird dude. Yeah. But in this one, he's really serious. And I was like, this movie makes you feel weird. But it's also <laughs> funny. Like the scene, you've seen Con Air, right? Yeah, 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 The scene where later on he's in front of the little girl. Mm -hmm. That's supposed to be terrifying. Yeah. But I was just like, I don't know, it's kind of funny, but I shouldn't be laughing. <laughs> and then it was over. Yeah, my, my go-to reference for like, just like the Saturday, the, yeah. the Saturday afternoon you know, movies that they always show, uh, was uh, Boondock Saints. Oh, dude, good movie. Yeah, because I was just like, what the fuck is this movie? And I was like, Willem Dafoe. <laughs> I was like, I'm <laughs> in. <laughs> and I was like, he's a gay policeman? That's weird. Well, fuck it. Let's fucking see where this goes. <laughs> and like, he does like the whole like, going through the motions mm -hmm. of like, how the scene goes. And mm -hmm. I was like, this is really weird. I like it. And I just kept watching it. So that, that's my go-to. Yeah. When, like, I discovered something, like, just randomly. Um, you, you have cable right now? We, I do, but here's the thing. I don't watch anything. Really? Yeah, like, so many people are saying, like, for anime, like, we're in Brian's room yeah. uh, recording. He has a big uh, scroll of My Hero Academia. Yeah. Everybody tells me to watch. Literally everybody I know tells me, watch it, watch it, watch I it. And I, and I can't sit down and watch anything. Like, I... I, I, I honestly, I was talking to another friend and I was like, I really do lament the fact that I can't turn off my brain. Like, I literally cannot turn off I my brain. You know what show that, like, on the same type mm -hmm. of thing I can do? I can't watch Stranger Things. A another one people tell me to. I've tried, like, I've gone to episode six and mm -hmm. then by the time, like, I've passed, like, six ended, I'm like, I don't remember the last three. What the fuck just happened? Because I'm like, <laughs> in my head, I'm like, oh, this is cool. I'm going to look up something while this is playing. Mm -hmm. And I look back. But also I have my graphic novels. And mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, I'm going to read this while I look up. And next thing you know, like, I'm so absorbed in, like, three different things where mm -hmm. I'm like, fuck, I toned up the thing that... Yeah, the thing my, that you wanted, yeah. Yeah. That, I can't do it. I can't do it either. Like, for some reason, like, everybody tells me, like, God, you fucking hate movies. And I was like, it's not that I hate movies. Yeah. I hate going to the theater. For something that I know I'm probably not going to enjoy. We had this conversation. That, yeah, yeah. So, so like everybody tells me this. Like fucking they get pissed at me for that. All my, all my other friends. And then it becomes a thing where uh, they tell me, why don't you watch Netflix? You don't have to go anywhere. I, was, I can't. I don't know what it is. Maybe my attention span fucking blows dicks. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could literally turn off my brain and watch something. But I can't. If I'm watching it by myself... It's ridiculously hard. I should be doing something else. Yeah. And most Dude, of the time. Same here, for sure. So, I, I, and the thing is, sometimes they get to that point where it's just like, I'm doing three things at once and I don't yeah. know how to do it. So, I'm like, all right, I got to, it's two things. I got to watch this and do something else. Yeah. So, it's, it's usually painting Warhammer, which I haven't done in a long time, or play a video game like Paragon where I can kind of like tune out of it yeah, every yeah, once yeah. in a while. Um, so, that's how I watch wrestling. That's how I know I can watch wrestling. Exactly. But here's the thing. I was watching, and, and I know this is a wrestling show. We're talking a whole bunch of different shit. It's but the loop. It's coming back. It, it's coming yeah. back. Yeah. Uh, specifically, I was watching Global Wars, okay. the Chicago, because I wasn't going to watch four. Well, it's four hours each. Uh, a few of them. Four, four. So 16 hours. I, was, okay. I wasn't going to watch 16 hours in a week. I, ca I can't do it. Yeah. Got so it. the whole thing was, like, I was like, you know what? Let me play some Paragon. Let me put this on. Let me enjoy it. And then I found myself like not playing Paragon and actually paying attention to ROH because it's it's different. Yeah, I can do that with WWE. I can literally put on something from WWE except for NXT. Uh, like I can put on SmackDown. Mm -hmm. I can put on especially Raw, um, or I can put on 205, and I can have it playing and have the volume way up. Have the the and I can play a video game. Yeah, and I know what's going on mm -hmm. with ROH, even though. They're just as good at describing the action inside. Mm -hmm. I actually want to see that for some reason. Like, I want to see it more. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I end up paying attention to that more. And that's what happened with Global Wars. Is I was playing a video game. I was like, fuck the video game. I turned off my <laughs> PS4 and I was just looking at my phone. And I could have easily just put it on my PS4, but I, I didn't. That. I do that all the fucking time. Yeah, but it's just like something. It's just like, it's right here. Yeah. I have to look at this. It's my phone. Mm -hmm. So I was like, fuck it. Let's just do it. And I watched four hours of, you know, ROH on my phone. Yeah. So, 
Oh, uh, Global Wars is good. It's really good. <laughs> At least that one. I don't know about any other ones. What I, was the card? Oh, there was a whole bunch. It did open with th uh, three out of four of my favorite people. Three of my favorites and then one that's okay. Is, okay, I'm going to guess Chuck Taylor. Yes. Uh, Trent Beretta. Mm-hmm. I'm going to guess the whatever one is Rocky Romero. No. Okay, fuck. So the other two, the other, there's another it, it, person. It's, it, it's, it's, two ta it's two tag teams. So you already got the best friends. Best friends. And it's, a, it's another tag team. It's another tag team where one of them you love and the other one's kind of whatever. The other one is okay, but yeah, more whatever. He's not the money in this. No, no. For, for fuck sure, he's not the money. Uh, God damn it. Um, is it Jay Briscoe and Mark Briscoe? No. Uh, Jay or Mark, I think, is like out with like a shoulder. In, uh, oh, an elbow injury. He dislocated oh, yeah. his elbow okay. um, recently. Fuck it. I'm not going to get it. Silas Young and, and the, the beer. Fucking beer City Bruiser. <laughs> <laughs> what are you being nice for? Fuck the Beer City Bruiser. I mean, he's there. Like, I know what he's there for. <laughs> to make Silas look even better than he already is. Fuck, god damn it, I love fucking Silas Young. Dude, Silas Young's money. He's too good. So, uh, that was the opener. It was, it was awesome. That's uh, great. You know what? Let, let me see. Tell me how much you love the fucking Beer City Bruiser. <laughs> I, okay. I, I'll give him credit where credit's due. He can take a bump. Usually he'll take a pretty good bump. But with Silas, I don't know, man. I just feel like Silas Young, I don't know if like the whole indie wave came too late for him. But I feel like if this was... Because right now he's probably in his early 40s from what it looks like. If they, he was early 30s and the big indie wave connection with the internet came, I feel like he'd be one of the most over wrestlers like in the fucking world. Because his, his in-ring performance is great. His mic skills are fucking hilarious and is so like toned with his character mm -hmm. but i just think you know his physical appearance kind of maybe stems from it but man, yeah. man he can move oh no like he can fucking move i i think he is for sure you know the internet maybe passed him by a yeah. bit but he is like the wrestler's wrestler yeah like he is lit he says like his whole thing is he's the last real man he literally looks like the last real man. <laughs> That's fun. The way I first saw him was at a live event. Really? The first time I saw Silas Young was at a Ring of Honor live event where <laughs> they announced him as pro wrestling last real man. <laughs> this is in 2012. Damn. And man. yeah, so and he's ago. been doing it way before that too. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know, I was just like, who the fuck is this guy? I even, I, I think the first time I heard of him was on Cabana's podcast. Oh, okay. And I was like, oh, this guy is like just, he's a nice guy. He's just like, yeah. He's he, so nice. He's, he's so super so nice, nice, but his character is a super dick. And I was like, man, I fucking love this. And I checked out a few of his matches, you know, just on YouTube. And I fell in love with that guy. One, his match with Shibata is one of my favorite matches of all time. I'm going to actually look that up. That's a great match. It's just a man brawl. It just basically, uh, I didn't get to watch it. I'm going to watch it mm. because him and Minoru Suzuki is something I wanted to watch. Yeah. So I got to check that out for sure. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, but uh, it it opened up with uh, tag just Chucky T and Beretta Sexy T. Uh, versus Silas Young and the Beer City Bruiser and Beer City Bruiser and Silas Young won. That's crazy. Yeah, so it was pretty cool. Uh, the next up was the villain Marty Scurll and Hirosh. What? Hiro 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 Takahashi. Takahashi. I yeah. fucks with both of them a lot. It was really cool. Daryl got involved. Oh, dude, I love Daryl. He's married now. Is he? Yeah, he got married to like, uh, <laughs> it was one or two Barbie dolls, uh, Hiromu posted it. His Twitter, I can't, it's, a lot of it's in Japanese, yeah. but the pictures are hilarious because they're mostly Daryl. Uh, the whole thing was that Vardy got Daryl, and he was gonna break his, his, uh, paw. Yeah. And everybody ch started chanting, you sick fuck, <laughs> you sick fuck. And then he ended up hitting, uh, Takahashi with Daryl. Uh, that didn't end the match, but, uh... Marty won with the chicken wings. Okay. So, that was pretty cool. After that, it was kind of a eh, whatever match. It was, and it should have been a, an eh match uh, because it did have Kushida. It was Kushida and Cheeseburger huh. uh, versus the Addiction. And apparently the Addiction's like a heel thing now. Yeah. They're, they're back to being heel. Yeah. Uh, after a little face runs. Um, and yeah, the Addiction won. I've, cheeseburger loses almost every match. Yeah, and then uh, Bully Ray uh, 
actually comes out, slams who? Uh, Kazarian through a okay. table, and then says he's pretty much gonna retire. Oh, I heard about that. So I was like, okay, I don't necessarily care. Yeah, I think he knows uh, it's time because Devon retired earlier in the year too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I just don't. I grew up in the Attitude Area, uh, area, the Attitude Era, <laughs> and even the Dudley Boys. I was like, they're cool, but I was like, past the tables, I don't really care about them. So like, they didn't do anything for me even when yeah. I was a kid. So him retiring, he had a, he had a sweet thing. He was just like, I can't thank everybody, you know. But he brings up like a little kid out of the crowd. And a table that he smashed, he takes a little piece. And he's like, I can't thank everybody, but I can thank you. And you're going to represent everybody. So here's this piece of the last table that I'm going to break. And everybody was just like, yeah, cheery. And I yeah. was like, I want to fast forward. <laughs> <laughs> so I ended up fast forwarding. Um, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, but then after that, it was the Bullet Club. So it was uh, Young Bucks, Cody, and Hangman. Versus uh, machine gun, uh, motor city machine guns. Okay. Uh, Jonathan Gresham and Jay White. Jonathan Gresham's a new one to me. Yeah. How was he? Okay. I uh, I think he still needs some work. Okay. Um. What's his like? Game? He's just some guy, or does he have like a? Game? Yeah, he's just some guy. Okay. He's just like athletic guy. That's it. What's his body type? Is he like Jay White, or is he like? No, no, he's much much smaller. Oh, he, okay. He's much smaller uh, height wise, but okay. he's he's fit. Mm -hmm. He's not like super bulky. He's fit though. Okay, cool. Um, what ends up happening? Uh, oh, bu Bullet Club wins. I, I figured. Yeah. Uh, I think he has pots or just this is kind of a match. Uh, same thing that happens at a, in an eight man, they all go for something okay. and they end up missing like back to back to back to back to back. Okay. Um, Cody, I think does like a top rope senton and misses. Like, I don't know why he did that. Like out of everybody else, like, why did Cody do that? I thought like one of the young bucks would do that, but yeah. no, the young bucks ended up doing like trying to do like uh somersault stuff like that. Mm. Um, but yeah, it, it was it was an all right match. I, I can't shit on it. It was just like, oh, it's just an eight man. Yeah. That's pretty much it. Yeah. Everybody looked good. Jay White looked good. Mo oh, but Bullet Club was totally face. No matter what. <laughs> like, everybody was booey. <laughs> uh, wow. Machine guns and Jay White and everybody. Like, they were getting boos. Dang. Jay yeah. White bums me out. I love Jay White. The Motor City Machine Guns, Alex Shelley and uh, Chris Sabin. I feel like they're kind of, them too, they're a great tag team, but I think mm -hmm. they've kind of passed them. I think they would do well if they maybe pursued another type of thing. I don't know. Because I know they're a great tag team and they're mm -hmm. like super revered, but it's just a matter of, I mean, unless they're content with what they're doing. Yeah. If like, this is the peak, this is good. Well, well, I mean, they are the ROH champions, tag champs. Oh, they are now? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. They beat the Bucks? Yeah, they beat the Bucks. Oh, cool. Well, good. So the Bucks are only down to two. I watched, actually, funny enough, uh, at not the when TNA started coming down from because back when TNA was actually good, it used to be pretty good. Um, towards the end of it, of it being worth checking out every week was when Saban and Bully Ray were feuding for the belt, and it was actually they had some decent matches. It was a pretty good back and forth. Is Saban the one that looks like uh? He's they they're both white dudes with long hair, from what I remember. Yeah, but one of them looks like what's his face. Um, they even kind of look like a hangman without a beard, from what I remember. One of them looks like, oh my god, I'm forgetting his fucking name. Uh, indie guy got busted in Japan. Oh, um, Matt Sydal. Matt Sydal. One of them looks like Matt Sydal with a beard. That or might like, be Alex Shelley. Wait. No, huh. fucking Matt Sydal even has a beard. Yeah, <laughs> so Matt like, he literally looks like a like a just a little bit shorter version of Matt Sydal. And I was like, is that Matt Seidel? No, it's not fucking Matt Seidel. It might be. I want to say that might be Chris Sabin. I can't even fucking know. No, that's Alex Shelley, yeah. Yeah, Sabin. Okay. I don't know if he did at the time, but he usually has longer hair. Yeah, yeah, and he still does. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. And his uh, ring gear, his boots like, connect 
directly like hits his boot mm -hmm. and then it's connected to his pants somehow i don't know if he still does that but i remember he did that at the time when he was feeding with mm -hmm. bully ray because one of the things is he took his boot off but to do it he had to like rip it from his gear and i'm like oh fuck he ruined his gear what an asshole it was a long like i said this was towards the <laughs> this was when tna really was coming down <laughs> this was yeah we stopped watching i think after that yeah, aj was gone ah okay there you go aj was gone rude was on his way out young was barely there mm -hmm. <laughs> james storm was there every week <laughs> so we, we just kind of slowly drifted away yeah uh, after that, it was intermission, but then it came back with the dogs, Will Ferreira and Red Titus. Fucking Red Titus. Man. Uh, versus Brian Johnson and Justin Pusser. Pusser? Might want to rethink that name. Yeah. Honestly, they just look like jobbers. <laughs> I don't know if they are, but it looked like it. And... Uh, the dog thing was Red Titus would just like throw the other one into offense for him. <laughs> like one of them, like the the opposing team would be in the, in the corner, and instead of him like doing a spear into the corner, he like grabbed the other guy and like toss him so he speared him. Yeah, and that's that was the whole offense. Cool. And like he would pick him up like he was gonna slam his partner, and he's like, "Put me down." He's like, okay, and he would like slam him on the opposing mm -hmm. member. Uh, they ended up winning that match. Okay. So. It wasn't great, but it was something. Yeah. I, I enjoyed Red Titus saying, Big Dog's got him. Dude, Red Titus is it. hilarious. <laughs> He's been doing that since, man, he used to be in a fucking faction with Kevin Steen. He was in, really? Yeah, he was in Scum. It was him, ah, okay, okay. Matt Hardy, Red Titus, and I think Steve Carino. Someone else. This is a while back. Okay. This was after Steen and Generico broke up and Steen was on his heel run. Okay. Yeah. Some, there's actually some good stuff in all of his phases, though. Kevin Steen was always money. Kind of like he is in WWE. Dude, fucking basically. What? He has... We'll get into that. Yeah, we'll, yeah. Get, we'll get into that. Wow. wow. Uh, but next up was Minoru Suzuki and the Killer Elite Squad, Lance Archer and Davey Boy Smith Jr. Who tagged with Suzuki? Oh, it was them with yeah. Them. Oh, it okay. was them with with uh, Suzuki okay. against Shane Taylor, Jay Lethal, and Kenny King. Did everyone chant the the Anseni Nare for Suzuki's music? I believe so. Yeah. Okay, his music is so tight. It was a cool match, except I left the match not liking Kenny King, and he's their TV champ. Yeah. So Kenny King actually just won that from Kushida recently. Yeah. The thing is, uh, I'm pretty sure, because Kushida was, he actually lost both belts, holy shit. He was IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion and mm -hmm. TV Champ. He lost it to Kenny King recently, and I thought it was because, well, oh, maybe he's going to focus on Japan then. Mm -hmm. They really want to push him just for the IWGP, Yeah. so he's not just going back and forth. Mm -hmm. And also, Kenny was recently on like The Bachelorette or some shit. Yeah. Yeah. So, they're kind of really working that. Yeah, yeah they are. Yeah. I, I think I did see a little bit of I think the the before the Chicago I think it was Columbus okay and it was supposed to be Kenny King and then Marty came out and told him like you couldn't even get a date on the fucking Bachelor or whatever the fuck <laughs> and then uh, I saw somebody on Facebook posting a group that I'm in they're like I don't know if y'all know this but like Marty Scroll is on a dating yeah. game too. And I was like, oh, shit, this is Party Marty. Because yep. <laughs> he's, like, super bulky. Like, super bulky. Yeah, man. Juiced. And clean shave. A clean shave. Fucking. <laughs> fucking weird. <laughs> yes. And uh, oh, he ends up picking, like, the cutest girl there. So I was like, all right, Marty has good taste. <laughs> the little bit. Have you, you, did you watch, like, the whole thing? I didn't watch the whole thing. I just watched, like, the last, I would guess three minutes or so. Okay, it, like the vignette of him saying what he does for a living being mm -hmm. a pro wrestler is just, it's fucking silly. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I think I had to watch the whole thing. He's like zoomed in on his face. He's uh, like, you wouldn't believe what I do. And then it zooms out and I think he gives someone like a snap suplex. <laughs> he's like, yeah. And it's like a, like the floor cam and it's super in his face and he's like uh -huh. smiling while he's like wrestling. And yeah. It's, just... it's so weird to oh, see buddy. that guy bulky. Like that, yeah. that bulky. He was stuck. Yeah. I was like, ooh. I'm like, I'm glad you kind of slimmed down there. Cause, he looks good. Because he looks good now. Like, being stocky just didn't fit his frame. Nah. He, he's a small guy, and nah. being like that is just too much. Yeah. 
But uh, that was a pretty good match. The fucking highlight of the match was honestly Suzuki giving a gotch style power driver to, uh, to Shane Taylor. And the way he set it up is he kept going for it. And then after a while, he just like beat the shit out of Shane. Dude, oh like, my God. Literally like, beat the fuck out of him. I was like, all right, let's do this. And then fucking like held him in place for what seemed like a minute. I know it wasn't a minute. It was probably more like 30 seconds. Yeah. But held it. Didn't buckle, nothing, just like, and Shane Taylor's a big motherfucker. Yeah. So he was just holding him, and then just fucking sat down and went for the pin, one, two, three. Dude, I'm so glad he saw Suzuki match. Minoru Suzuki is the fucking man. I have to watch more of his shit, the, to dude, be honest with okay, you. Okay, so, watch him, because right now he has the never belt, and the never okay. belt is basically just like the open weight belt in New Japan. And right now, uh, <laughs> fucking, um... God, uh, Toriyanu is the number one contender mm-hmm. for the Never Belt. Really? Yeah. If you want to see one of the funnest <laughs> matches in my in the history of wrestling, look mm-hmm. at the G1 Finals, um, Toriyanu versus Minoru Suzuki. Because <laughs> Toriyanu is just fucking around, always trying to get low blows, and he actively is always immediately trying to take off the ring, uh, the padding, mm-hmm. and hit somebody with it, yeah. and he'll tape people to something. Yeah. That's great, but Minoru Suzuki is always just... He's always fighting all the young lions too, because yeah. young lions do security, mm-hmm. and he actively goes out of his way to kick all their asses <laughs> all the time. He is fu- he is matched with Elgin recently mm-hmm. at uh, Destruction the first night. It was really good also, mm-hmm. and all of Suzuki Goon gets involved. Really, yeah, it's fun. Piece by piece with New Japan, I've like really gotten into each faction for different reasons. Yeah, you get in because Bullet Club, then you got in about Lij, mm-hmm. and then you really get in like. To how good Chaos and Okada is, mm-hmm. and then Lij's kind of just there. I mean, um, Suzuki Goon's kind of just there. Mm-hmm. But then you see singles matches with Suzuki and El Desperado and Sabers in there. Yeah, and they're just man, so much talent. Yeah, fucking love that show. Mm-hmm. Good programs all the time. Speaking of Toriyano, <laughs> Toriyano <laughs> versus Colt Cabana. <coughs> I need to see that. Yeah, it is really funny. I need to see. So that. it starts off with. Uh, them coming into the ring, and of course, Yano has the uh, has his DVD, oh, his DVD. Chaos DVD, and Colt Cabana comes out with his DVD, of course, and then uh, they're they're like the they're just like, huh, huh, like you want it? Yeah. And then the the crowd gets into it, trade, 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 and they get it, and then. Um, <laughs> Like, Toriyano just, like, looks at his DVD and, like, chucks it and then goes after Colt and Colt hits him. He's like, no, no, it was a joke. It was a joke. He goes, go get my DVD back. (laughs) And he has his DVD, so he chucks it. And then he, like, they get into a little scrum. After that, they both go to get their own DVDs. (laughs) Then they end up just giving them away to fans. Then it becomes a whole thing where... There is a spot where he tries to tape him. Tries to tape yeah. Colt, um, but the whole thing was that he was going for the dusty, the the punches, yeah, and like doing the roll up. And when he was going for the elbow, he ducked it and then got the tape and taped up his arms. He was going for something and he still hit the elbow. That's awesome. So that's funny. And then there was uh, turnbuckle pad spots. Awesome. So there's that. And then uh, yeah, it was, it was a, a fun match. Uh, Cabana ends up taking up the dub. Then, after this, I don't, I don't know how, how you feel about this. Will Ospreay versus Flip Gordon. I'm a fan of both. I like Flip Gordon a lot. Ospreay I, is actually the new IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion. Also. Is he now? Yeah. Because she'd have clean. Huh. Sure. And he got challenged by Marty. So the next event is going to be Marty and uh, Ospreay for that Junior Heavyweight belt. Interested, yeah, man. <laughs> matches for that belt mm-hmm. are always like great. the peak of high spot wrestling. Really, seriously, like the heavyweight belt. Uh, don't get me wrong; it's the IWGP heavyweight belt is more than likely revered as like you know the belt after <laughs> the WWE belt. You know, the yeah. heavyweight belt. But with their junior heavyweight belt, it's just on the mat chemistry. Mm-hmm. The gotta, best wrestling, yeah, the best like uh, chemistry wrestling between people. So good. Fair enough. Yeah, like the last p- past three or four defenses, it's uh, 
Desperado and Kushida, which is great. Kushida and Hiromu, which is great. Mm -hmm. uh, Kushida and Bushi, which is great. Mm -hmm. Osprey, the beat Kushida. Um, not Osprey and uh, Scroll. Mm -hmm. But, man, for that belt, every time that matches, it's just amazing. I love mm -hmm. that stuff, man. So good. Yeah. I'm a fan. Cool, cool. Super fan. I, I have to check out some of those things. For sure, man. Um, but Will Ospreay picks up the win okay. off a of flip. Um, just like, side spots. How do you feel about Flip? Um, I don't know what the hell he was doing. He was like, he yelled, too sweet me. And then did a fucking somersault on the top rope. Yeah. And I was like, huh? <laughs> I was like, is he just doing that because he was on me and the Elite? Yeah, probably. And I was like, oh, okay. But I was like, is he maybe going to be the Bullet Club? That would be funny. Just to see him. Eventually just let yeah, him in. Yeah, just eventually let him in. Um, Did he do a split one nine? Mm -hmm. I love that. It was good. Uh, it was just high spots. It's it's those two guys doing yeah. what they do best. So mm -hmm. it was a good match. And then after that, it was the main events: Kenny Omega versus uh, Yoshihashi. Oh man, a Yosh match. Yeah, for the U.S. for the I IWGP U.S. Heavyweight Championship. The curse of Yoshihashi. On the mat, that boy can move, mm -hmm. but his look and charisma are forever going to be like a mental blockade when I want to enjoy his stuff. Yeah. I mean, his tights are cool. I, I like his ring gear. His yeah, ring was gear. it the red and gold? or It was like, yeah, red and gold with some turquoise. Did it come out with the pole? Yes. God damn it. Mm -hmm. Fucking hate when he comes out that pole. Yeah. It, he doesn't have a lot of charisma. You're right. Yeah. Like, and then you look at his face and you're like, you don't have like, I'm not saying you're not good looking, but you're not good looking. Yeah, and, no, I hear you. And, and it's just like your facial hair don't work with your face. Like, seriously, you, you gotta make, so, you gotta do something. Yeah, and then man. your hair is like half fucking uh, Tanahashi, and like try and do your own thing. It's just like you gotta, you gotta. I don't know if he's like completely bought into his own style. I don't think so either. I mean, they've been trying to prime him up for a minute now to yeah. be like the next. Not mm -hmm. the next ace, obviously, because that's... I mean, Okada and Naito are totally mm -hmm. carrying that. Yep. With Bushi hanging in the background and Kenny, but they've been trying to do stuff with him for a minute. Yeah, it wasn't... Uh, the match was good. Yeah, no, I, I'm, no I'm, doubt. I'm, On the mat, yeah. he, he's great. Yeah, it's just his look. Yeah, yeah you can say. for yeah. sure. You can say his look is holding him back a bit. Um, but yeah, it was a good match. Awesome. Um, key spots was Kenny called out for 10 boots. So he gets the whole Bullet Club out. Um, oh, and they all put their boot up. They all, on the, they all put that. both of their both feet onto the turnbuckle, and then Yoshihashi calls for ten boots as well. So chaos comes out. So it was Yanu, um, the best friends. Okay. Who else? Uh, was uh, who, who else from Chaos was there? Chaos, there's Makabe, there's no, uh, Goto, there's uh, Ishii technically is in Chaos, mm -hmm. uh, there's Okada, yeah. there's... Uh, uh, I fucking can't remember who else. Let me, let me see if maybe it says in an article. Oh, uh, Osprey... I keep writing Ospreys in Chaos. Okay. And Flip. Flip? Yeah. What? I don't know why. But uh, it, was, <laughs> it was Best Friends, Flip, Osprey, and uh, Yana. Yeah, uh, Chuck Taylor tweeted, like, I don't know what Chaos is, but I think I'm in it. <laughs> so he might be in Fair Japan enough. in the future. That's sweet. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, a lot of stuff maybe uh, there were there was interference of course from from both of them because mm -hmm. there was a ref bump. Um, Who was the ref? Can I ask? Uh, was it Red Shoes? No, it was it was a it was ROH. Okay. Uh, fuck. Big uh, guy. Big Chubby guy. Blanca? Yeah. Yeah. Oh God, I always know his name, but I can't forget. Remember yeah, they, they they keep saying they kept saying his name during the match yeah. too. Yeah. He's like uh, their, he's like the ref over there. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, uh, Kenny ended up winning with the uh, one winged angel. But yeah, it, it was a good match. It's just, man, you can tell Kenny doesn't like that belt. <laughs> nah, man, it's not for him. 
Uh, he, I feel like he knows that. Yeah, and I think, not saying like his matches are showing it, but there's something there. Cause yeah, his cause, matches are, mm-hmm. are, and and granted, it's just it's ROH, it's not New Japan that mm-hmm. he's you know fully invested in, but it's just the the, the match felt off. Mm-hmm. So I was just like, okay, but it was a good match overall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I totally agree with you. That's uh, uh, if anything, that belt really should be on Juice Robinson. Like, man, that belt needs to be on Juice Robinson. He looks so good with that. <laughs> it's kind of one of the best baby faces in the world. So I just think it would... And he's the American over there. Yeah. So I think it would just look sick. It would make mm-hmm. sense, yeah. but we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. But also, he's pinned Kenny before. Yes. Mm-hmm. That is true. Um, but that's pretty much it for Global Wars. Cool. Um, what else? And anything you want to say about Raw? About Raw? Yeah, you said uh, you saw a little bit of Raw. Yeah, I saw a little bit. Uh, I also like tuned in some other stuff. Mm-hmm. As a whole, I still think the three hours is a little much, but I did like the shield stuff. That stuff was cool. Okay, so it was, was fun. So you're in on the shield again? Uh, yeah, I'm good with it. I do. I see what they're. I totally see what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Like I totally see the transition to making. At this point, Vince Man's like, okay, I'm gonna get this motherfucker over mm-hmm. if it kills me. Mm-hmm. He, you know, put him in a match with Cena. Mm-hmm. The most booed man in the world, mm-hmm. second of Roman, and even in that match, they didn't even say cheer for either. They cheer for Cena, but they still for, somehow throw a Roman sucks in there. Yeah. So it wasn't like let's go Cena, let's go Roman. It was <laughs> let's go Cena, Roman sucks, <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> and then they have him now with the Shield mm-hmm. going against the Miz, who is honestly the heel mm-hmm. of WWE. So mm-hmm. I see what I see. What's trying to be done here? Yeah. I do like the shield. I think they're fine. But when I see them together, I do think that, like, it should have been that way for a while longer. Mm -hmm. Just, like, in terms of the New Day. Okay. Uh, The New Day has been around about as long as the shield was. It was, like, a two, three year. It's been, like, a two year run. Mm -hmm. Tipping into three. And that's how long the shield was together before they broke up. Mm -hmm. I think it should be that way for a little while longer. Mm -hmm. And it should definitely be the high mid card stuff. Okay. Because that's the only way that I think Roman would ever get over is if he can have some good matches. Mm-hmm. His mic work, he's back to the shield. It's Dean being Dean. Mm-hmm. Seth, like, kind of talking more. Roman saying, like, two words a day. Mm-hmm. It fucking works. Mm-hmm. It works in that manner. Yeah. So, I enjoy that. I see what they're doing. I hope it works. Mm-hmm. Let's see. I mean, I don't know. Let's see. That's all I got for Raw. Fair enough. Yeah. I mean, and then there's the whole Neville thing, but, you know. Yeah. Did you guys talk about that? We did talk about it a little yeah. bit, okay. but maybe you, do you have a little more insight? So, and I've been, uh, I don't dirt cheat as much anymore, just a little mm-hmm. update on anybody, but um, from what I saw and what I read as constantly updates is that he's just, what was the straw that broke the camel's back was, mm-hmm. it was, people were speculating like he didn't want a job to Enzo again, mm-hmm. and, which seems weird because he's always been understanding with the business and what you do i doubt it was like a match fallout Mm -hmm. that this dude say well i'm not gonna do this that Mm -hmm. makes no sense because you just have to lose some time especially having the run that he did with the belt Mm -hmm. being undefeated you're just gonna lose it just sometimes happens from what i was reading in the part that i finally saw from a few articles that made sense is it was explained to him that the program that he'll be involved in is gonna still be cruiserweight and they don't see him expanding in the near future to anything else other than this mm, division. Okay. So he's pigeonholed even when he doesn't have the belt and that's when it just made him think then what the fuck am I doing then? Because mm-hmm. even when you did have the strap he wasn't on the DVD for WrestleMania and he's on the pre-show for almost every pay-per-view. Mm-hmm. He's not getting sales from those pay-per-views because yeah. he's on the pre-show. Mm-hmm. So if the whole point of all this work was to be a big star and now he's here but when he is here, he's stuck with this division that is being managed poorly, honestly. Mm-hmm. And he's their star, but still doesn't fucking matter. Then what's the point? Yeah. And with that aspect, I'm like, I agree with that. Yeah. Like, like what the fuck? Why? True. Yeah. And Aries even tweeted the other day that he's already making more money in the bingo halls he's booked. <laughs> yeah. Than that. the big, big league money. Mm-hmm. So what the fuck then? Yeah. And then he had to like defend it. Like some people were saying, like. 
I don't know what it was. He was just like, no, WWE, like, they give you money. Mm -hmm. Like, that's fine. But the fact is, I can do what I want. Yeah. And still make good money. Yeah. And I was like, fuck it. Hell yeah. Then why not do that? Like, why wouldn't you do that? Yeah, even at that, because you're on travel. Even if you're not on the show, Mm -hmm. you're traveling. Yeah. You're booking hotels. Mm -hmm. You're booking flights. Mm -hmm. You're driving your ass to these stadiums, to Mm -hmm. these venues, constantly. Yep. And you're getting paid what they pay you, Mm -hmm. flat out. So, if you can make more money and travel less Mm -hmm. and just do it on the weekends, which... The people who come out, they say that's like immediately what the deal is. Because, yeah, WWE, it's the company. Mm-hmm. And it's going to give you the name you want. Mm-hmm. So that's good. But why stay there and stay within this realm of making, you know, whatever money they're making, which sounds like it's just okay from their division, yeah. to doing these things that they feel are mediocre. Because mm-hmm. I don't want to say this and come off as like an arrogant prick that's mm-hmm. saying it's mediocre. They are, if anyone, they are the ones that feel that like, why the fuck are we doing this? Yeah. It's funny because it's totally reminiscent of how WCW treated their Cruiserweight division. Mm-hmm. And if you go back to WW, WCW tapings, which you can on the network now, mm-hmm. just for nine ninety nine a month or whatever the fuck, <laughs> uh, you'll go through those. And the those matches are what are worth the playback. Mm-hmm. The feuds with Mysterio and Jushin Liger yeah. and when Ultimo Dragon brought the J-Cup to the fucking, to the Cruiserweight division and mm-hmm. Eddie and Dean and... The division where it was bastardized because it was just filler before mm-hmm. Hogan comes out and talks for thirty minutes and wrestles for five. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's yeah. still what's the black the play the playback? What's the yeah. difference is WCW didn't give a shit to where they're like do whatever you want. Yeah. In WWE, they're making them wrestle a specific way, mm-hmm. and then it, it's not only that like it's the filler, it's the mm-hmm. quote unquote you know bathroom break. Mm-hmm. It's a quote unquote bathroom break that has to be rehearsed a specific way, and it's like. Yeah. It's just frustrating, honestly. It's yeah. really fr- especially with a talent like Neville. Yeah. Man, what a guy. Mm-hmm. He single handedly like brought that division like some star power. Yeah, for sure. And then it like started just dwindling and dwindling and yeah. dwindling and dwindling. So yeah, I can see that. And hey, good luck to you. Seriously, man. Good for him. So I know you're gonna do good. Osprey was already saying like this match could happen. That would be fire. So yeah. He was already saying Pac and uh I hope he comes up with another name though. I feel like it would be, if anything, King Pac, maybe? I don't know. Even that sucks. <laughs> the Pac is a bad name. Just change it all together. I, don't know. I would say just change it all together. But just, I'm, I'm not a wrestler. What, do I, what the fuck do I know? I know um, um, Squirrel was saying he needs a tag partner for the, yeah. for the WGP tag tournament. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm down. See, that would be cool. Everyone wants a piece of this dude. Yeah. Dude, they saw exactly what he could do. Yeah. And just like, fucking, you have the star power. You can literally, he could have had the fucking title, like the whatever, universal title, whatever. Yeah. He could have held that belt, and it would have been believable. Makes me think about Devitt. (sighs) Yeah. I don't know. Like, I honestly don't know what the fuck is going on with, they have so much talent in each one of their... Each one of their uh, quote unquote brands, yeah, that I don't know what's happening to it. Yeah. Like, I there's only so much that you can do, mm-hmm. and you're not using some of those guys effectively, you're putting them in like mediocre to shit storylines mm-hmm. that no one cares about. No one gives a fuck about Sister Abigail, no, no one gives a fuck. Nah, man. You pissed Bray Wyatt down the drain fucking a year ago. Fucking maybe even longer. Yeah. And now you're trying to like, oh, fucking uh, Finn will fucking yeah. save him. And it's not. It's not happening. It's, dra- it's just dragging Finn down. That's all it's doing. Yeah. It's- Let's go on to SmackDown where... It's bad. Good. It's honestly a bad product. It is. There's so much like, there's so much talent that if they just let them, like they just give them a mm. little bit of breathing room. Oh, Man, they'd, they'd Wyatt, have so much fucking money. When Wyatt oh. premiered, he was... he Wyatt really, 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 and I wholeheartedly say this, and I know this is some people would be like, how could you compare and fuck you? Wyatt really could have been the magnitude of this generation's Undertaker. Mm-hmm. He really fucking could have. Mm-hmm. But for some reason, they had him lose everything. Yeah. Which I don't fucking understand. 
I don't, I don't know. <laughs> he has, he's great on the mic. He can move in the ring, but somehow I don't give a shit because his matches don't matter to me because the stories they tell me always lead to something that I end up not caring about. They always end up with him losing. Yeah. Yeah, so it doesn't matter. It's just like, he's not going to win anyway, so what the fuck do I care? Oh, he's going to win this match, or he's going to lose the next one. Remember how hyped we were when we won the belt? We were yeah. Fucking, we're all about Bayou Strong Style. I yeah. Mean, what the fuck happened? No. He fucking lost the belt. Hey, he lost to uh, Cena. Oh Did he lose to Cena? I don't even know, man. No, he won it from Cena. He won it from in the Elimination Chamber. Yeah, yeah, okay. Him and Styles had like... No, he benefits. lost it to fucking Randy. Oh, my God. Oh. Fucked it. All right, let's let's get uh, let, let, let's fuck. get to, let's get to some good stuff. SmackDown. Okay. All right. So Dave Bryan opens up the show. Oh, he got an ovation. Oh, he was in Seattle, baby. So there was uh, no fucking way he was not gonna get a fucking powerhouse chance. Dude, it, it was awesome. Well, and then the Indies. Oh, I I don't know how they're gonna pay that guy. I feel like he. I honestly feel like he'll book himself and just he's like I'll handle it. Like, you, I got it. Do you think he'll buy ROH? He could. I mean, I know he could. Do you think he will? I don't know. He's just like, fuck it. I have a lot of money because of everything. That, but that... I do think his return match mm-hmm. can sell out a stadium. For like, sure. Like a stadium. Mm-hmm. Like a WWE, we have this many seats mm-hmm. because we think this many people are going to be here. Stadium. Mm-hmm. And if, oh, everybody will show up. And if he somehow can get CM Punk involved, Jesus uh, Christ. I don't think that's going to happen. That's the yin and yang of if those two dudes somehow got together when mm. it was it's the return. Yeah. This is actual, in my head, running numbers like that can compete with WWE, and I'm not even exaggerating. You're not wrong. You really aren't. Like crazy. But I don't think that'll happen. I don't either. I'm just saying man. that. I was thinking about this. I was like, what would it take for Punk to come back to wrestling? I don't know. Like, honestly, wrestling. Because he says he doesn't want to fucking yeah. wrestle. Like, mm-hmm. that it's been beaten out of him. Mm-hmm. He does not care. But it's just like, you're not even doing anything with UFC. Like, you're not doing, you're just getting money from him. I guess that's cool. But you're not doing anything. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? You're writing comic books for a little bit, and then that fucking gig's right up. Yeah. So it's like, well, what the fuck is going on? You don't, don't you, he doesn't need money. We know that. Oh, no. He's safe. But, but I'm like, what do you do? I'm like, like, Here's the thing. AJ has confirmed that she misses wrestling and really wants to return at some point. The who? AJ, his wife, AJ Lee. Uh-huh. She misses wrestling. She misses the mat. Huh. So, if at some point she's... Th- here's the thing. I love AJ Lee. She was great. I think she definitely was there way too early. Because she was the only one that could actually move in the ring. Holy <laughs> fuck, what a bad time for women's wrestling. Yeah. Oh my god, how bad. Mm-hmm. If she comes back, not only is that good that she's back because she's great in the ring, but that also I think that eventually old Phil will be like, I mean, it's around me a lot more and I'm mm-hmm. seeing it. It's cool, I yeah. guess. Well, I mean... He, yeah, like, he, it's cool, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently he was at an ROH show like a few months back. Like apparently he was at ROH, like he was... Like you know, in yeah. the back, and he was at an ROH show. If I think honestly, if anything would bring him like, back, it would be Daniel Bryan's return match. Do you really think he like Daniel would be like, dude? You and me would be able to fucking buy ROH, <laughs> put it on a fucking pedestal that no one has ever put it on. It's and we can compete. We can have our own streaming it's service, and possible. people will fucking go out of their way yes. to buy this. Uh, Daniel Bryan and CM Punk is the bridge from casual WWE fan mm-hmm. to indie wrestling. Mm-hmm. It's there completely to get the typical that just watch WWE just because mm-hmm. they now know about these two mega stars. Mm-hmm. Will be like, I'm gonna check out this show because I know they're gonna be here. And coincidentally, whoever the fuck else is going to be on the card for that return match oh, is going to get exposure beyond fucking belief. Mm-hmm. That's t-shirt sales, that's viewership, that's sponsors. But I do think if he was ever going to return, mm-hmm. if Debray offered him his return match, he would do it. Because other than Punk, Debray's return match is... Who could he even do it with? I mean, he has long feuds with people in the past that mm-hmm. are in the indies, but I mean... To the magnitude of Omega, but yeah. even at that, I mean, can Daniel wrestle like that? Is style? Yeah. That's... So that's another thing. Yeah. 
I just think that. Yeah, I wonder how his style is gonna, like how much of his style will be affected. We'll see. I mean, we'll, we'll see. Honestly, Brie gave him the re- green light. Yeah. That's gonna. That's. We'll see next next year probably. Next year, next, next November, I think he's released officially. But then they have like a no complete con- clause for like six months or something, don't they? Not when they're. It's when they quit. I don't think when you're released, I mm-hmm. think you're good. Really? Yeah, because your contract is up. Yeah. So they can't really tell you if you're officially not under contract. Okay. okay. But when you, I think it's when you quit or mm-hmm. when you're fired. Okay. But when your contract is actually up, I don't think so. Oh, but they're they're the fucking assholes that would be like, all right, we're firing you on your last day. You do have a point. There. They'll fucking fire them, you keep them, keep them chambered for six months. Shittier things have happened from that company. Like, yeah. I can't disagree with you. Yeah. Mm. Anyways, let's yeah. get let's get into fucking SmackDown because Sami Zayn comes out and is the happiest man alive. <laughs> God damn it! So Zayn comes out and is cutting a, a a pretty pretty solid promo in terms of uh you know all these fans they were they were always behind you Daniel Bryan but they were never behind me yeah I was always coming out with a smile. And through hard work, they'll they'll like me, and they'll they'll give me the op- they will give me the opportunity. Yeah. And he goes, but they did not hold their end of the bargain. And I was like, ooh. All right, <laughs> he's kind of right. <laughs> That's some booze. Yeah, and I was like, man, this guy, I like it. I like it. This is what this guy needed, because now the spotlight is on him. And uh, Owens comes out, and they start fucking talking trash. And they love each other. <laughs> and then uh, what they are the saying. Man. It's always, it's always going to be there. So we treat. Yep. I enjoy it. Uh, but then that triggers uh, Daniel Bryan to be like, hey, all right. You're going to have a tag team match. And it runs throughout the show. Uh, they, f- what? they book Kevin and Sammy versus... Nakamura and Orton. Orton, yeah. Um, that was the main event. Yeah. And what happened in between there? I know there's some fashion files. Uh-huh. Or some pulp, uh, what is it? Uh, fashion pulp. What is it? Pulp, pulp fac- uh, fashion. Pulp, pulp fashion. Pulp fashion. Yeah. Apparently, <laughs> Tyler Breeze loves the gluten. <laughs> uh, it's so good. They really are. And why not put them in 205 Live? Why, why not? not? There. Oh, um, real quick snippet. Mm. On the pre-show, Drew Gulak is going to have a PowerPoint. For TLC. Really? Yeah. <laughs> All I'm right. Today, so I'm down. Good. All right. Um, I might have to watch actual... Fuck, it's this Sunday, right? Yeah. Jesus Christ. Now it's back to fucking wrestling on wrestling. Um, what else? The Ascension. Getting over now. <laughs> because of fucking the fashion files, we just want to be friends. <laughs> I love that shit, man. Um, what else happened? What else? What else is in the news today? From last week, uh, one of my favorite things ever is when uh, the New Day Musos had that fire promo, mm-hmm. and they're talking about how the only tag teams that matter. Then all of them come out and they mm-hmm. talk shit about everyone. Mm-hmm. And after they talk shit about Brizongo, mm-hmm. then but- they think, no, no, no. They're pretty cool. And they're like, yeah, yeah. And then they high-five them out, like, yeah. I'm like, God. I have never laughed that hard this year. I was dying. Just like, yeah. Fandango is one of the funniest human beings on the planet. He is. He ma- truly he's is. really owned into his character and his mm-hmm. mannerisms. Holy shit, I can't stop laughing every time he just... He's on screen. He's, he's so good. So good. I mean, they're just like... It's funny because... Like, we love them so much. They haven't wrestled in, like, <laughs> two months. Like, they have not wrestled. They're still getting paychecks. Yeah. And all they're doing is just having fun with whatever they're doing. It's fucking fancy. And I'm like, you know what? I know they can wrestle. So when they are going to wrestle, yeah. it's going to be fine. But I'm like, this is completely fine. Just keep doing all this. Apparently, uh, uh, Mr. McMahon is dying to get on the fashion file somehow. Really? Yeah, it's just a matter of his schedule and the right time to do it. <laughs> that's so oh, that's weird. There's that. <laughs> uh, what else? What else? What else? Was, um, I will say I don't know why they're still doing Rudin Ziggler. I think that's my only like nitpick. 
Yeah, it wasn't even a great match, to be honest with you. It was just a whatever match. Yeah. Um, I don't have any notes. Yeah. I don't. I don't take notes when I when I when I watch wrestling. So. Uh, Corbin had a match. No. With AJ. No, with um. Did he have a match with? Um, yeah, I know Corbin was there, and I hate that he has the Universal title, the Universal, the U.S. title. Uh, me and Brian were talking about that, and we're like, oh, fuck, he's gonna bring the fucking title down. But we're, we're giving him a, an honest shot now. Is he doing the open challenge? I think. I, I'm, I'm, that's what I'm looking up right now. SmackDown results. Do, do, do. Uh, Charlotte Flair, Becky, and Naomi versus Natalia, Lana, and Tamina. Mm-hmm. I think, nah, I don't know. I don't think, man. I'm trying my best not to talk shit and be a hater, but Natty is really bringing down that belt. She is. To be honest with you, get and I think I know what's gonna happen. We gotta get that bad boy back on Charlotte. Well, here's the thing. It's gonna be on Charlotte for two seconds, and then Tamina. No, what's gonna happen is. They're gonna they're they're pulling this taffy until Starcade. Okay. So Starcade is in Charlotte, North Carolina. So Charlotte and and Natalia yeah. gonna gonna have their mm-hmm. fight. Charlotte's gonna win. Uh Carmella's gonna put in her money in the bank. Oh, okay. You so, know uh Starcade's not gonna be televised, right? It's not gonna be televised? Yeah, I'll show. Really? Yep. Huh. It's fucked up, right? That's a real lost money opportunity for yeah. WWE. Y'all are very stupid for not doing that. Yeah, and when I found that, I was very upset. Uh, well, like, a lot of fans have been doing like retro posters for the event. It looked, it all looks so cool, mm-hmm. and still has the same vibe, same energy. But mm-hmm. gotta find, gotta find a way to fuck something up. Mm-hmm. It's not WWE unless they do that. That's really stupid. Uh, oh, Sankara. Uh, against uh, Baron Corbin. That's what it was, okay. And he wanted to be a count out. Uh, Gable and Benjamin interrupt the Usos promo, so that's going to be a thing. Uh, I don't know how I feel about them tagging still. I don't know how I feel about the fucking Bludgeon Bros, brothers. Yeah, I don't know. Man, fucking... Harper can't get a break. Harper, he was so good. I really think he... It sucks how Baron Corbin has his spot. Yeah. He has, Baron Corbin has exactly what Luke Harper should have had, except I think Luke Harper would have really seized every opportunity Baron's had. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I really don't know. Oh, and then uh, Jinder Mahal is going to fight, uh, what's his face? Brock Lesnar. Survivor Series? Yeah. For, at Survivor Series. And honestly, I, I've been on the Jinder train. I'm fine with Jinder, but I think that's going to be a quick match. Yeah, no, for sure. That is going to be a very quick match. That or Lesnar's going to have a hell of a time thrown around the goddamn Singh brothers. What the fuck is... Yeah, I, I did notice this. Tom Phillips is on assignment. What the fuck does that mean? I don't know. I wonder if he's in trouble again. Uh, but yeah, that was pretty much it. Oh, oh yeah. Um... New Day Taunt, 8th English, and Rusev is going to involve, so maybe they're going to have a little feud there. Okay. I'm done with that. Aiden so, English and Rusev versus New Day. That fun. should be fun. Uh, but yeah, that was pretty much <laughs> that was pretty much SmackDown. Oh, the the end of the match was Sammy actually pinned Orton. That's beautiful. That was fucking awesome. That's a sight I like. <laughs> and he was so fucking happy. I think even Owens tweeted a picture of like uh, the feeling you get when you <laughs> pin a 13 time champion, and it's Sammy and and. Uh, Kevin is like holding them, and fucking Sammy has like the biggest smile you can possibly imagine. It's kind of my boy. Yeah, I'm glad that that guy is getting some, some more, some more juice. Some more juice in the system. Yeah, because that guy needs it. Needs the juice. Uh, but yeah, that was SmackDown. Uh, I did not watch 205. I, I didn't have enough time. <coughs> um, yeah. Um, it's not me worth, neither. <laughs> it's not. I don't know if it's worth watching anymore. Like I know Drew Gulak's there. Love I love everybody on there, minus Enzo. <laughs> That's crazy, man. That's such an all-star roster. It's just booked funny. 
Yeah. It's just funky. Uh, man, they have Jugu like that's doing awesome stuff right now. Yeah, Jugu like is. They have fucking niece. Tony Nese, Tony Nese uh, which is like the epitome of Vince McMahon's builder wrestler. It makes no sense why Gulak isn't Nese's mouthpiece and Nese is like the Brock Lesnar of the Cruiserweight division. There's no I, reason I, why that hasn't happened. I, I didn't even think of that. How, yeah, because <laughs> Gulak is fucking money on the mic. I oh, love yeah. him. Mm-hmm. He can really, he's comfortable, mm-hmm. he's speaking his language, it's good. <laughs> nice is horrible every time he has a Just mic. He's like, I mic. have eight pack. <laughs> <laughs> I got abs. Yeah. You got crabs. <laughs> From me, Tony Nice. <laughs> Cut the commercial. <laughs> Cut the fucking commercial. God what damn it. What the fuck are you doing? I don't know, dude. Fucking. Dude. Dude. He still do his lucha fucking thing. Dude, I got crabs. <laughs> I bang a lot of holes. God. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what to do. Anyways, let's NXT? get let's get out of the NXT. My favorite, my favorite, my fucking favorite. So, uh, Sony Deville, Ruby Riot, and Ember Moon—they're gonna have a match. They had a match yes. for see who's gonna be next entry into the four way for mm-hmm. the vacated NXT Women's Title. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Deville, although is getting better in the ring. I still think they should have repackaged her. That's just me. What? Here's the thing. She's not a believable MMA girl. She's not. She's at all. Because you see... No, it's not even that. It's just like her mannerisms, nothing. Because you saw Shayna Baszler, which I I don't particularly like, but she was an actual MMA fighter. You You believe it. Yeah. So that's the thing is like you see... Uh... Sonya Deville, yeah. and you're just like, you're not believable. Also, like, I like her name. It's kind of a generic name. It's, it's almost as bad as Tucker Knight. Tucker Knight. Um, it's up there with Cesar Bononi. Yeah. Oh, fuck. We'll get to him in a little bit. Um, <laughs> but, uh, good match. I like that they kind of kept her out of the way a lot of time. Uh, and it was literally Ruby and, and Ember. I love that. That good, was awesome. Yeah, that was a good match. It was really good. Uh, Ember, what the... You know, being the... Opportunistic. Opportunistic, yeah. Uh, maybe a little heel. Yeah, huh? that's what I was sensing. I was like, what? Maybe, maybe she's going to be a heel. I mean, you're going to have... You already have two fa- oh, one face there. You're probably going to have Dakota Kai. I'm I love, Dakota Kai. I love the eclipse out of nowhere kind of thing. I yeah. hope that continues to be a thing. I like that uh, Sonya Deville had the ankle lock. That was cool. That and, was cool. Like, I, I like the setup for the Eclipse. She also had a nice spear uh, when Ember does her in-ring spear. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Or she does her in... Yeah. No, her crossbody. Her mid-rope uh, crossbody. Oh, that's right. Yes, yes, yes. She turned around. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sony caught her in a good spear. Mm-hmm. It was good. So she's getting better. She's getting better. It's just... It's mid- not mid- iconic <laughs> duo better, but it's... Oh, yeah, fucking yeah. no one's as good fucking as Fucking money. So, yeah. So, Moon gets the win, and she's moving on to take over to mm-hmm. join... Sane and Peyton Royce. Mm-hmm. Uh, security camera showed it. Fucking the Undisputed Era talking to Roddy. Giving him a nice Undisputed Era shirt. Roddy politely declines. Gives him the shirt back. Which, spoilers, they come out at the end with all those shirts. And uh, I was lukewarm on the shirt. I really was. I was like, it's an okay shirt. And then after looking at it, really looking at it, but, you know, when, it mm-hmm. come, when they come out at the yeah. end, I was like... That's a good shirt. <laughs> I'm buying that shirt. <laughs> so I I will be purchasing an Undisputed Era shirt. It's too. a good look, man. It's a good shirt. I like the colorway. Yes. Can't go wrong with uh, gold on black. Mm-hmm. Such a good look. Mm-hmm. Uh, then Regal talks about the last spot for TakeOver, the woman's belt, and says it's going to be a battle royal. Mm-hmm. Okay, now this is where I really want to talk about character development because mm-hmm. the iconic duo... And man, Billy Kay's mannerisms, mm-hmm. like the face she made when she announced that, she just... <laughs> the annoyance that sat on her face, yeah, and then just uh, then runs away, yeah, and then Royce just, <laughs> how could you? How could you? I love these girls so much. They're great. These I, girls. I I was bad mouthing them when I first saw. Them. I was like, come on, they suck. You and, and I both. And I was just like, you know what? Peyton's getting better. They're definitely getting better. And then they started doing the fucking little backstage yeah. things little backstage segments and I fucking fell in love with them because I was like this is exactly what they needed yeah. like just to kind of be like a little like mean girls That's and it works it works perfectly so I was down Yeah. and now I like both of them now I can remember Billy Kay's actual name 
<laughs> that is true. You're like, yeah, Peyton Royce and... And then what's her the face? Other one. <laughs> Great stuff. Yes. After that, we have a, a match with Raul Mendoza and Aleister Black. Mm-hmm. And this is from Brian, because we talked to him. He wants a shout out to uh, Earl Mendoza. That chubby brown man. <laughs> I'm brown too, it's okay. I'm a, I'm a fat brown man, so I can say all these things. Uh, so, right when match is about to start, mm-hmm. Velveteen Dream comes out, puts on Aleister Black's vest. Mm-hmm. The whole time we're trying to get Aleister Black to look at him wear his vest. Mm-hmm. And then the match started going. Yeah. It was good. Uh, Black picked up the dub mm-hmm. because that's what he does. And then, then Dream took his vest. Yeah. So, yeah. I want to see him like fucking do like an, like uh, I want fucking Alistair to cut a promo on Velveteen. Okay. Without addressing Velveteen. Oh, okay. So like you're... being like sometimes adults have to put children in their place. Like a third person kind exactly. of Exactly. Yeah, that's good. Oh, it'll be, it'll be great because then Velveteen like will come out, his music will yeah. hit, and then Alistair will just, like, continue talk. Oh, if he continued talking through the music, I was just like, yeah, and just kept going, oh, it'd be so good. I like the uh, uh, Velveteen Dream, his... What's funny, too, is Alistair called him Patrick, but one time he did. <laughs> like, funny yeah. thing that Patrick doesn't know, and that's not even his name anymore. Yeah. Like, in kayfabe, <laughs> that's not his name. So I was like... Fuck yeah! Way to like just kind of rub him, and uh, but also his elbow is officially the purple rainmaker. So I was yeah, like, okay. That's and it's it. a little bitey, but that's whatever. Let's get it, man. It, it's what it is, and plus it's good. His fucking second rope hop to the third rope to the he has a elbow. mighty elbow. Yeah, just the way it's set up, just the second to third, like the way he jumps yeah. and then just like immediate elbow drop. Yeah, it's he good. also has a his senton bomb, mm-hmm. like his rolling senton bomb. Yeah. Man, it's good. But also last week, I don't know, because if they used to, if it's because they used to tag with each other. But mm-hmm. him and Leo, man, yeah, chemistry. Yeah, it was a really that was a very good match. That was holy shit good. Uh, it was only like a two minute, like two three minute match. Mm-hmm. Man, that was good. So yeah, so uh, Dream, uh, excuse me, uh, Black picks up the dub. Mm-hmm. Doesn't look at Dream, but Dream walks away with his vest, mm-hmm. and their match at Takeover is one of the. I'm really excited for that match. Yep, it's gonna be great. Then we get to an interview with our NXT champion, Mr. Drew McIntyre. Basically talks about how hard it was when he let was let go. Uh-huh. How we had to you, actually start working. You know what's funny? This is practically Roddy's promo. And yeah. He, and he does it a million times Yeah, we, I was thinking the exact... There, I was like, this is, this is Roddy's promo. Minus like... Oh, he was in NXT, then got let go, whatever. Like, he was in WWE and got let go. Roddy needs to be heel, man. He does. He so needs to be heel. Roddy versus the fucking world. Yeah. I, I really hope it happens. I, I know it's going to. I mean, I hope so. <laughs> they need to pull the trigger on that shit. Yeah. But it was great. It was really good. I mean, I never thought. I never took McIntyre as a charismatic person. That's the thing. Is yeah. like, every time I saw, like, little snippets of McIntyre, I was like, Oh, yeah, he's yeah. a great wrestler, but yeah. I was just like, that's where it ends. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And then he actually does this promo, like this little thing. And I was like, God damn, like he got me feeling something, even though it's probably all bullshit. <laughs> There's like a little bit of truth yeah. probably to it. But I was like, he made me like, I was about to take a shower and I was like, mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. 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 holding back a tear. Um, but then Ms. fucking Vega. Ms. Vega comes in. And accuses him of fucking dodging CN. And I was like, oh my god, this is actually happening. <laughs> I was like, holy fuck. I was in the shower, I was like, oh my god. <laughs> Dude, I'm so excited for CN being in the title match. If he wins that goddamn belt mm-hmm. at TakeOver, which I will be at, I'm going to yell. You have no idea. I'm going to fucking yell. Y'all are going to be the only ones. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be shouting out Tranquilos all uh-huh. night. Tranquilo. Mm, my LIJ fist fucking proud of the air. <laughs> I really, really hope he wins that belt. I will be seeing this from the comfort of my home, but goddamn, if he wins, I'm going to yell and wake up everybody in my house. I mean, McIntyre said all he has to do is challenge him face to face, and he has his match, so let's see. Hopefully it happens. Hopefully. Wink, wink. After that, we get the match with Ono and Caesar Bononi. Mm-hmm. Ono wins. That's all I wrote down. Yeah. Again, 
Talent. They just don't know what to do with. Yikes. <sighs> then we got CFO versus Sanity. Yeah. My two favorite factions. Yeah. <laughs> in this match, a lot happened in this match, but the yes. one thing I really want to highlight, personally, from my perspective... Alexander Wolf. Killian Dane, for me. Okay. Just his sequence of holy shit moves that he does back to back to back. He bricklays. Mm -hmm. Like, the one that legit, I was like, okay, so is, is that, I mean, is he dead? Because he gave him, I don't even, I think it was O'Reilly, he gave him a wasteland to a senton mm -hmm. to a fucking Vader bomb. Mm -hmm. And then, towards that, I was like, is he dead? Like, <laughs> fuck. Well, I mean, he pretty much was dead. That match was won until... <laughs> until <laughs> Paul Ehrling came out and beat the shit out of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I would yeah. love to see Paul Ehrling come out and beat the shit out of everybody. <laughs> Just fucking throwing fucking potatoes at everybody. <laughs> I mean, his daughter is hard as shit. <laughs> uh, but yeah, AOP comes out and they interrupt the match. Yeah. So Sanity technically was winning. Mm -hmm. Technically, you're right. Actually, they did win because they attacked Sanity first, right? Yeah, so, so yeah, because uh, Alexander Wolf ran over them. Yeah, yeah. Dang. You know what, Alexander Wolf? I used to talk a lot of shit about him. He's getting better. He's getting a lot better. Yeah, man. And I actually looked at it and I was like, you know what? Just lose the back brace, whatever the fuck. Lose you're... the tights. The well, tights. You know what? I understand the tights. I don't like the circus pants, dude. I but I understand it. Like I understand everything about it. So I was just, you know what? The tights are fine. Just lose that. Back breaks or the, 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 wa the warehouse. Yeah, exactly. Fucking... He's like, I've been working at a warehouse for thirty years. <laughs> Just did a shift real quick and yeah. want to get some matching. <laughs> like, yeah, dude. Uh, the fucking the ring. It's really stiff. It straightened me out, you know. <laughs> but yeah, I actually looked at it. And I was like, you know what? You're doing a lot better, and I'm glad you're you're doing better because I used to shit on you real bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, fucking undisputed had some good spots there too. Yep. And fucking Cole gets so goddamn sweaty. Yeah, he does, man. He gets a he has a fucking glandular problem <laughs> or something. He's always been really wet. I never thought about it as sweat. I always thought it was like, uh, like I don't know, I guess oil and the mm -hmm. amount of like he puts in his hair. But no, yeah, he was getting really sweaty on this. Like by the end, when they're like on the ramp, mm -hmm. he's like super glistening, and I was like, holy shit! Like, I wonder how much he actually sweat. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know, Probably but quite a bit. Everybody had some good stuff. I missed that Fish did not have his fucking mouthpiece in. Oh, yeah. Because I always liked that he had it, like, he was just chewing on yeah. it before, and then he would just, like, you know, jam it in and just, like, start strutting his way down. I that... hope they didn't tell him to stop doing that, because Fish has always been the mouthpiece guy. Yeah. Like, even in Ring of Honor, and mm -hmm. he's always had a mouthpiece. Mm -hmm. I love that about him. The little jagged fish teeth mm -hmm. that he used to have. So, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, overall, NXT... Fucking of wonderful. course, always good. Fucking wonderful, man. So next week, we'll be talking about that fucking battle royale. And I'm going to have to take notes because... A lot of going in. Yeah, because there's, there's a lot, lot of these women that we haven't seen yet. Oh, there's a fuckload. Yeah. There's... How many is it? It's tw is it 15 or something? Is that 15 about? Jesus. I know Candace is in there. Wonderful. They, they show Candace. So she's... Oh, so does, does that mean she's... Excited? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That they're, they're just putting... They're just, you mm. know, have a few freelances... Um, I hope we see some Piper. I hope so too, but I, I don't I really think don't so. Know, but yeah. yeah, I'm just a fan. I didn't know she was married. That was really weird. Yeah, yeah. I saw her on Twitter, and I was like, "Huh." I didn't know that you were. I would not have thought you were being. You're like fucking ridiculously young. What's crazy is a lot of people in wrestling. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about it. Almost everyone is married. Yeah, like they're. Either you're either married, not like have a girlfriend, either mm -hmm. married or you're single as fuck. And it's not even like you're single now, you're just, you're never gonna get married, dude. Mm -hmm. You're just living this lonely life. <laughs> that sounds fucking rude, but everyone has a, like, yeah. uh, when the Cruiserweight Classic ended and all of them were all of the, they're all having their farewell matches. Mm -hmm. I was going through everyone's farewell matches and Mustafa Ali saying, you know, my wife was really excited. I was like, you have a fucking wife, dude? <laughs> like, I, I think he was like a cop or something. And yeah, he, he rest And mm -hmm. he wrestled at night. Mm -hmm. and I was like, you do all this and you have time for like a relationship. He was a cop. Marriage. He was, he was a cop because that was his gig for a long yeah. time until he got into wrestling. 
I was like, man, you're a cop, you're a wrestler, you're married, you probably have a kid. Yeah, he has a kid. Yeah, I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> How do you have... I don't... I'm single as hell. I work, you know, 10 hours a day maybe, and I can't do anything. <laughs> I'm fucking useless. Finding out that Brian Cage is married, finding out that... Uh, oh, man, he has a kid on the way too. Yeah. Um, I just almost... Every, I mean, KO, big family mm-hmm. man. Sami Zayn, fucking single forever. You just either you're single or you're not. It's not really my choice, everybody. Yeah. Those are the categories you have. It's just in the either rest of the they world. can deal with it or your partner can deal with it or they can't. Basically, on yeah. a, basically yeah. down to a T. Uh, Adam Cole has a girlfriend, but I'm pretty sure he's gonna marry her. Mm-hmm. Britt Baker. Britt Brit Baker. Jesus Christ. I oh yeah, she stumbled. Like, <laughs> I stumbled way too hard on that. <laughs> she was gonna. Oh man. I saw her in a picture with some, with like, ah, uh, fuck. I had to go to Adam Cole's uh, thing. Not, fuck, that's the thing. I'm kind of torn now because I, I can't go to, to, to NXT TakeOver. I, yeah. can't, I can't go to War Games. Uh, but I do want to go to either ROH or NXT. And apparently they're on the same day. From what I saw. So I'm really going to have to think about Because I know... Well, here's the thing. is I think I'm leaning more towards ROH. Because um, Eric, a, a buddy of mine that's sort of into wrestling. His little brother is super into wrestling. You're talking about that. Yeah. And uh, another buddy, uh, Psyduck, who actually listens to this. Because he told me he does. Oh, cool. um, so my buddy Psyduck and Eric... Both want to go to ROH, but I'm like, man, now that I know that fucking Cole and um, and McIntyre are going to compete for that belt, I'm like, fuck. I just have to see the, the, the card for ROH, but I kind of want to see the villain because I'm a big fan of the villain. Yep, both the same night. Just double check. The, they're both the Friday before <sighs> of that man. week and the next day is the takeover, so yeah. All right, well... I'm going to have to think on this and check out the cards, see which is better for me. Here's the thing. I also saw from a tweet from Cody Mm -hmm. that the Being the Elite cameras might be at the NXT parking lot. (laughs) So what the fuck? I don't know. Can I go to both? This thing is crazy. Are they they the same start time? Probably, right? Probably. Fuck. More than likely. They're... Fucking petty. Both those companies especially would be that petty. Petty as fuck. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to think about this. And while we think about this, before we get into our match of the week and we close this out. Okay. I just want to let everybody know, you can go ahead and follow us on all social media. Basically, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook, and just search up Grimworks. Uh, We're there. We might have a Snapchat uh, about that one. Uh, If you're listening to this on YouTube, go ahead, like, comment, and subscribe. Click that little... Uh, bell next to them so you get emails and they let you know when new content drops. All the time. Uh, if you're listening to this on SoundCloud, which I didn't know we actually have a little bit of a following on SoundCloud, so that's pretty cool. That's cool. Uh, go ahead and follow us there. Like any episodes that you do like from any of our catalog. Uh, also, if you're listening on iTunes, go ahead, rate, review, subscribe there because that is very, 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 very important. Please and if you want to reach us through any other means, go ahead and send us an email at citypod88 at gmail.com. Do it. And in the title, go ahead and put wrestling. Yeah. Uh, but I also do want to give a shout out. And who is sponsoring our matches of the week is Fade Grips, uh, pretty much Fade Grips that store. Uh, what they do is they make uh, joystick uh, covers, you know, thumbstick uh, grips, as well as controller. I call them controller condoms, but they're called controller covers. Uh, they have they have banners, they have T-shirts, and I always say go ahead and get the mystery pack, uh, the Pro slash Glow, because it's ten bucks. You can get twenty percent off by using our discount code Grimworks. That's capital G R I M M W R K S for twenty percent out before you check out, and go to FadeGrips.store. Now, Seth, what is your match of the week? Yes, for this week, man, I haven't really put much thought into it. Um, I'm gonna think right okay. now. Go ahead, go ahead and think. It's gonna be. I, it's gonna, not gonna be from this particular week, but just because you 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 know you know the deal. I haven't been here for two weeks, so mm-hmm. uh, you know I'm built up. So last week, funny enough, last week my match from last week is gonna have to be Leo Rush and Velveteen Dream, just because 
I'm off for. I've learned something about myself. When it boils down to it, I'm a I'm a mid card guy. I fucking love mid card wrestling. It's my favorite thing ever. Mid card is where it thrives. Yeah, it really is. It's the backbone. You know, it's not the head, but mm-hmm. it's definitely there. And um, Dream and Rush definitely could be some really good mid card stuff. And I love their charisma. Mm-hmm. And I love how much, you know, they got to be in the ring together for the first time in I want to say you know a couple of years. So that was great. My match for this week is going to be from last week as well, just because this week, Fair enough. oddly enough, didn't weigh out with last week's stuff. Uh, it's going to be from uh, New Japan. Okay. It's going to be Evil versus uh, Okada for the IWGP Heavyweight Championship, mm-hmm. in which Okada picks up the dub to further lengthen his reign, but also set up Wrestle Kingdom uh, 12, I believe, 12 or 13. I got to look back. No, it's 12. Uh, against Tetsuyo Naito. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to watch that live because there's no way I'm going to see the spoilers the next day and be okay with it. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. that match, good lord. Oh, don't get me wrong. The match with Evil was fat, phenomenal. Evil was also one of the few people that actually pinned Okada during the G1, so that was great. Mm-hmm. And he's grown so much with that character. I, I love... When people have a reaction when they first see a wrestler versus when they actually see him in action, mm-hmm. and Evil's totally up there because you see him, he's kind of a silly looking guy. Mm-hmm. But once you actually see like every, like, especially with his entrance, he was full on uh, Japanese Undertaker in this. He mm-hmm. was brought out. He had like a clan of Reapers coming out with him, mm-hmm. and he was like you know the big head Honshu Reaper in the back. Yeah, he definitely had a few good stiff spots on Okada, but it's just that Rainmaker baby, and he yeah. sold that Rainmaker good. So yeah. he's really coming to his character. I'm a fan. They're doing great. And I cannot wait for Wrestle Kingdom. So those are my matches for the week. Watch some wrestling. There's so much good wrestling everywhere. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. My match of the week mm-hmm. is the first match we talked about. It's going to be Chuck T and Beretta versus Silas Young and the Beer City Bruiser. Don't pay attention to Beer City Bruiser. Just pay attention to Silas Young and the best friends because they're just funny, 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 funny dudes. And it's just a good match all around. So... That's my match of the week, and uh, I think that wraps up our show. So, is there any closing statements that you'd like to make, Jose? For Brian, since he's not here right now, I want to say fuck James Storm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I want to say that I love Minoru Suzuki. Good man. I'm a, I'm a big fan. All right, fair enough. I'm gonna say just fucking watch any wrestling. Do I it. Mean, just do anything. Do it. If you're having trouble finding anything, go ahead and send us an email. I'll let you know where to go. We have recommendations. Yes, we do. Mm Mm-hmm. So, later, dudes. Have a great day.